Nick, you tasted success in rugby at a relatively early age, at the Varsity Cup uh, in 2011. At what stage, though, of your life did you realize rugby was something you could do for a living? Um, I was always really passionate about rugby throughout school. Um, straight after school, I went to the Western Province Institute, um, where we spent a year, you know, just training and, you know, living like professionals. And um, I guess it was from there, I, I didn't make any representative sides from that. Um, but I always believed that I sort of had what it took, you know, to, to make it, even though I wasn't getting selected, whatever the case may be. So I went to varsity and just had a big goal to play in the varsity cup and uh, managed to, you know, get a, get a look in there. And from then on, you know, um, I, from that exposure, I got invited to Western Province on the 21 trials. And, um, all of a sudden, there I was playing in the under 21 Curry Cup, where the year before I couldn't make the under 19 side. So I, it was it was through that year we had a very good year. We won the tournament, um, and I ended up getting my first contract. That's when it that's when the moment sort of hit. Can you remember the moment when you were told that you were now going to play represent Western Province or represent the Stormers in a big game? Yeah, yeah, definitely the Stormers. My first Stormers game was 20, 2011 against the Cheetahs away. Um, I'd always sort of been on the fringe, you know, there was two experienced guys ahead of me and I was rather young. Um, but yeah, I've been training with them for a while, so, you know, in the back of your mind, you always want that opportunity, but when it comes, there is that sense of like, oh my word, <laughs> here we go. So, yeah, I just remember having breakfast at the airport with my folks and um, it was quite a surreal moment, you know, I was saying cheers and I was actually going to go represent the Stormers. So. It was a good memory and you know it's something I look back on and I'm just really fortunate to have had that opportunity. Talk to me about the change in rugby from playing varsity cup level to playing super rugby. Physically, how different are those games? Yeah, obviously <coughs> uh, super rugby is a huge physical demand. Um, not only that, you know, it's week in, week out, you've got to play against the best teams in the world. There's a the travel element. Um, it all sort of, you know, the, this whole Super Rugby product is, is, is much more taxing than anything I've ever played in before. Um, the speed of the game is also um, very, uh, very fast compared to Varsity Cup or, you know, any of the junior sort of levels. I noticed, you know, that I needed to make a distinct improvement in my, my skill level and my fitness to be able to keep up and to be able to make a difference in the, in the game. I think for me, I was very determined not to just be a normal super rugby player, but to actually contribute and make a difference and have influence over games and uh, be, you know, someone of influence in my team. So, um, big change, but uh, you know, a lot of hard work went into making the step. So. What's the change like in terms of dealing with the pressure of playing super rugby where you've got a TV yeah. audience now? Yeah, well, look, I mean, Playing for UCT, um, you go from you know playing on a Wednesday night in front of three people and a dog to uh, pack Newlands. Um, obviously, with that, you know we are in the social media age where there's just so much conversation around rugby and sports and players and decisions and results. Um, so that is something I definitely had to learn how to deal with. I think initially, as a young player, it was something that you know I, I didn't really have a healthy relationship with, where you know I spend maybe too much time paying attention to that stuff but now I like to think that I've matured and I sort of have learned from that and it's just I just you know all the sort of the media stuff and, and everything else that goes with professional rugby I kind of tend to laugh off now it's not that important. You're a rare beast in professional rugby in that you've got a, a tertiary education uh, is that because you you want something else to fall back on when your rugby career ultimately will come to an end well let's let's hope later rather than sooner but sometime in your 30s yeah well initially you know when i left the institute i was going to go study because um, you know i didn't have i wasn't a professional you know that my next thing was to go and get a degree and to you know after that start working and i had at that stage had no real sort of uh, idea or no real desire, well I always had the desire, but I had, I had no real inclination as to whether I'd become a professional or not. It was just, you know, the, the next most important thing in my life was sort of getting to class. And um, during my first year, I, ended, I got caught up to the under 21, so you know, I was playing as an uncontracted player, and once I got the news that, you know, we're going to give me a professional rugby player full time, um, you know, I just made the decision that I would keep up with my studies, you know, I had to make one or two adjustments, I had to 
you know, hold back a few subjects a semester, but I was very determined to just to finish that, finish that degree because, I mean, rugby is just so, just so final, isn't it? Like, mm. your, your, your day could be around the corner. So, you know, being prepared for that day, whenever it may be, is also something I'm, I'm, I think is really important. Are you a, the type of person who can adapt to change when you look at the, the way your career's gone? Uh, you've been, a, you've had the captaincy as well, those responsibilities on your shoulders. How are you able to adapt to change, anticipate change, and work with change? Um, yeah, I think, I think I just, I think perspective for me is, is, is a key thing. Um, you know, a lot of the times guys get put into high pressure situations and they can fold. Um, you know, but I just tend to look at it as, you know, I'm here for a specific reason. I'm definitely good enough, otherwise I wouldn't be here. There's just nothing to be scared of. And having that fearless approach has really helped me deal with change. Um, you know, don't let it get the better of me, rather just, you know, have a go at it head on. Um, in other times in my career, I've actually, I've actually changed the way I've played um, due to certain game plans, conditions. Going from an under-21 rugby player to a senior rugby player, you know, if you don't have certain skills, you're going to be found out. So I've had to change and really work hard to, to become a, a more sort of well-rounded player. So there's been a lot of change in my style of play and my style of thinking and, the, and my style of training. Finally, let's just look at some of the, the big moments in your uh, career so far. I would imagine that Curry Cup victories might loom large. Yeah, obviously. Um, I'm lucky enough to have won two Curry Cups. Uh, a, a very great rugby of mine was that 2011 Varsity Cup final, I must say, in Pretoria. Just, um, you know, just the, the, the bunch of people involved in that campaign are, some, are really special um, and still are in my life. Um, and then, yeah, the Curry Cup 2012 in Durban, you know, we rocked up with uh, an extremely uh, uh, offensively young team, um, you know, away, and we ended up winning. Um, that was something special. Um, you know, I had, my, I had my old man in the, in the stands, as we'll see him afterwards, was also just sort of the cherry on top. So that memory, you know, is not going to go anywhere soon. And then, you know, and a whole other experience was having the final at Newlands in 2013. Um, you know, I think it was the first time in 11 years since we had won at Newlands. And um, having a full house, you know, screaming for province and us actually going ahead and, and doing the job was was also a, another great memory that I won't forget. Well, with the Bright Rock logo on your jersey for 2016, we hope you have many more memories. Nick, it's been great chatting to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Cheers.